Dr. Brancher, thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us here on Health Connection. Our topic is hormone replacement therapy, a balancing act. And we've talked about this on this program before. Uh, there's still a lot of misinformation out there regarding HRT. And that all stems from a 2002 study which was stopped due to concerns about potential risks. So we're going to discuss hormone replacement therapy and when it's an appropriate, uh, appropriate option. So please explain hormone replacement therapy and why it's used in women. Well, when you uh, medical professionals use the term hormone replacement therapy, we're usually talking about giving back females um, the female hormones of estrogen or estrogen plus a progestin um, when a woman goes through either natural and spontaneous menopause or when uh, she has surgical menopause. Um, estrogen can be given alone if you don't have a uterus, but with an intact uterus, then you need to have estrogen and progestin. So what happens during menopause that, that can lead to the need for hormone, hormone replacement therapy? Well, basically menopause is when the ovaries stop working and it actually is defined by not having a period for 12 months. Um, in our country, 52 years of age is about the average age of menopause, but there can be years on both sides and we might call it perimenopause where people start having um, symptoms um, related to that. And it has to do with um, the feedback to the brain. But in 2016, the most common reason that we treat patients or women with HRT is for symptom relief. What happened in 2002? There was a large study for yeah. hormone replacement therapy that was going on and then suddenly it was stopped. Right. The name of the study is the Women's Health Initiative. You'll, you'll frequently just hear, to, uh, hear it called WHI. It was a very large um, trial. Um, before the 1990s, uh, many women were receiving hormone replacement therapy um, in an effort to what we thought we were doing was decreasing heart risk and of course preventing osteoporotic fractures. But no one had ever really studied it um, scientifically. So the WHI took patients and um, put them on estrogen and progestin and then there was an estrogen arm alone. And unfortunately, after about five years, the estrogen plus progestin arm had to be stopped for an increased risk of breast, um, re breast cancer, cardiovascular disease, and blood clots. Um, the estrogen side went on for almost eight years before it got stopped for also cardiovascular disease and blood clots, but not breast cancer. Um, there were good things that came from the study, including um, what we expected, that people had less fractures, um, and also there was prevention of colorectal cancer in the estrogen and progestin group. However, with this news, um, uh, prescriptions for hormone replacement therapy did drop off by about 50%. So what are the uh, most common signs that a woman may be, have a hormone imbalance or be hormone deficient, and what are the causes? Well, when we're referring to menopause, the most common thing is going to be hot flashes and night sweats. And uh, medical professionals use the term vasomotor symptoms to refer to this. And it's estimated that 75% of women will have some hot flashes and night sweats. However, the severity ranges widely, so such that some women are um, extremely affected and some are mildly um, to none. Um, the other things that we worry about are things that happen um, in the genito uh, urinary system and the vaginal area. So uh, tissue there becomes dry and irritated. There can be an increase in urinary tract infections or um, urinary frequency. Um, vaginal dryness, of course, can cause problems with uh, painful intercourse and affect um, things like that. What have we learned about hormone replacement therapy since 2002 and are physicians using it more now? Well, fortunately, what we kind of figured out is that it's not a good idea to give women who have not had hormones for 10 years or so, give that back. What, when they teased out the data from the study, what they found is that they were, the average age of restarting hormones was 64 years old. So it, it looks like it's all about timing. And so now we actually feel that it is much safer to give um, women who are less than 60 or less than 10 years out from menopause um, hormone replacement therapy, mostly for the purpose of symptom relief. Is the 10 years or the 60 operative or are they equal? They're equal. You can use them both. Okay. What are your thoughts on 
hormone replacement therapy, do the benefits outweigh the risks? Well, personally, I should probably declare my bias that I'm an endocrinologist and a hormone doctor, so hormones are generally favorable in our book. But um, using the, gui you know, the guidelines or the things that I've quoted do come from people like North American Menopause Society and Endocrine Society, um, using the less than 10 years or less than 60. And then optimally, you want to use the lowest effective dose for the shortest amount of time. So that means that as the symptoms might get better with time, you're able to wean it and stop it. What are the more serious risks attendant to HRT? Well, the, the patients that really need to think about whether the benefits um, outweigh the risk are those with excess cardiovascular risk or excess risk for breast cancer. So if you have um, family history of cardiovascular disease, bad cholesterol, uh, certainly if you're a smoker, this should not be um, considered, or you have a high family risk of breast cancer, then you're going to have to uh, perhaps consider other options. Um, some symptoms can be treated with things that aren't actually the hormone replacement therapy. Well, assuming a woman begins hormone replacement th therapy sometime post-menopause, will she need to remain on that therapy the rest of her life? Um, no, that's not necessary at all, and um, according to the you know, guidelines, you want to wean that over five or six years and get people off. But there are people that choose to remain on it, and um, I don't think we'll ever know if that's completely safe, but as long as the person understands the risk and the benefits, um, then, then a person may choose to do that. So it's really, in the end, it is a balance. It's a balance of, of quality of life benefits versus the potential risk and a person should not make that decision probably on their own, and the doctor should not make the decision on their own. It, it's, it should be what we call um, shared decision making, um, reviewing those possible benefits and risks. Well, that segues into our last question. There's a ton of information on the internet and in the media, pro and con, about HRT. How should a woman make the decision? Um, definitely with a medical provider um, so that you can go over the risk um, if you understand the risk, and they are small, um, I think sometimes women or all patients tend to um, perceive the risk as greater than they are. Um, so again, shared decision making and weighing those benefits um, because there are women clearly that their life gets turned upside down during menopause. And um, I think the purpose of doing this segment is to make sure that, that women aren't suffering uh, through this needlessly when really the benefits may outweigh the risk for them. Is it important to weigh up the, you know, the, the actual number? If you, if, you, if you have a one in a thousand chance and you double the risk, then you have a one in 500 chance, still not a great chance. Right, absolute risk is something that you can talk about with your doctor because when you hear the term relative risk, it sounds much greater. And sometimes those numbers do help um, women make uh, better decisions. Very well. Interesting. Thank you very much, Doctor. All right. Thank you.